Hello everyone, it is just about 3.30. We are going to switch over to Steve here in just a moment. Um, Steve, do you have a, a slide I need to copy over or pull in? No, no we we'll just talk about it? Cool, cool, cool. I'm just gonna blather. Okay, sounds good. I'm just gonna babble like an old man. Fair enough. Um, all right, so we're gonna talk about um, filler anime, and I think we are all good to go on that, although, one moment, there's one thing I'm not seeing. Um, I'm not sure why I'm not seeing the... Okay, yeah, the, the chat will scroll in at some point. Um, hopefully that will work. Uh, yeah, we've got our all that stuff good to go, so I think we are all right. Ready. So, take it away, Steve. Steve. Thank you, thank you. You're very welcome. Sure. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I'm saying. Thank you for the panel. That was awesome. For, for the conspiracies. Conspiracies are always... Always fun, fun to to talk about and muse and and you know as we were saying earlier while the the other videos were going on, it's amazing how they all kind of look at the the same type of crazy face, you know, you know, very intent, very 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 immersed in what they believe in. So uh, I'm going to talk about um, anime. It's not necessarily the best anime that's out there, um, but it's anime that that's that's filler anime. It's it's you know probably doesn't get a franchise where Maybe it's part of a lesser known franchise. And this is kind of one of those animes where when you're at like a convention and you know, you're you're at the you're at the you're you're at the video room and you're just like, you know, I have to go to the bathroom, I have to get something to eat. And that you go, Oh, what's coming on? Eh, I don't need to see that. I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna go to the bathroom. Hopefully my cosplay isn't so you know, complex that, you know, I won't be able to make it to the to the John. Or if you're, you know, getting some food to eat, you know, where it's kinda of like you know, you're, you're paying that overpriced money for the, the mystery meat that kind of slides off the spoon and lands on top of the biscuit with that, like, really weird kind of sound. And those are the anime that you're kind of missing. So this is the anime I'm going to kind of talk about. They're fun anime. They're, they're, they're little things that, that, you should, that, that you should take a look at. And the first one I'm going to start off with is actually an ONA, and it's a very simple one. It's called Gloomy Bear. And Gloomy Bear, each episode... It's about a minute long. Very, very, um, very minimalist style animation. And the Gloomy Bear is just about a bear named Gloomy that was being uh, raised by a human named Pity. And it is the 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 thing is is that Pity is taking care of this cub and you know giving it nice you know tender loving care and then not realizing that it's a bear because you know bears when they grow up you know eat people and do bad things. So this <laughs> this this anime is really just about this really cute bear that turns into a murder machine. And so each episode descends into unmitigated violence, but it is kind of funny. Um, <laughs> if, 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 if that is something you want to laugh at. But the one of the things, the reason why that I, I bring it up as something to watch is that there's actually other stuff going on here, even though it's a minute long. Um, and even though the, the anime style is very minimalistic, um, there's a point to it. Okay, so the guy who created Gloomy Bear is named Mori Chak. Um, if you don't know that name, like I didn't know that name, that's not surprising. But for those of you who do, you know that he's a very famous graphic designer in Japan. And he has a whole line of cute things that go violent. And it's called um, Chak's, Chak's line. And debuted in 2000. And so what he does is he takes these adorable kind of creature type things and says, okay, here they are, and we're going to make them violent. And it's a very popular chain, and they, it sells a lot of goods. So they made, of course, a manga out of it. And a manga is just simply, as, as I described it, it's a, a boy who, who raises a, a, a bear. And then they decided most recently, I think it was, was it 2020? or yeah, I think it was in 2020, they released it as a one minute episodes on ONA online uh, anime. And it's got a pretty good following, but it's not something that you, you have to look for it. So you, it's, it's on, I believe it's on Crunchyroll. And you have to look for it and you have to, once you find it, then you can enjoy it. You can either enjoy it in all one sitting or just watch it episode by episode as, as you want. There's no, there's no underlying plot. 
Now, the genius behind this thing is that not only is it a basically just a line of violent, cute things, it is actually a statement that Maury Chak is making. And what he's making is, I, I'm making something that's supposed to be anti-Disney. He kind of took a look at Disney and kind of took a look at it and they said, look at their business model and said, okay, so we have these movies that are, you know, have animals, cute animals in it, cute animal people kind of things going on. And everything is adorable, and it sells all this merch, and because you know that's how Disney makes its money, because they they rule everything now, just about. And he he decided he wanted to create something that was cute, but totally not Disney. He wanted something ultra violent, that would be in total contrast of Disney. And actually, it's turning out that that it works. Um, and the the anime is actually driving up the the sales. The anime, I think, was kind of a passion project. I don't think it had a lot of funding behind it, but it is doing what it's supposed to do, and it's driving up sales. But this is the kind of filler anime that you kind of want to watch because, you know, you're maybe you're tired of, you know, watching the things that you, like, you know, Serial Experiments Lane, maybe you're, you just finished that, and, and, you know, you're just kind of going, I don't understand what I just saw. I need something simplistic. So you can watch this thing about cute things going and committing unmitigated violence. Um, what, like, for example, and some of these episodes are, can get so, quite silly. One of the episodes is that Pity wants to finish a manga, right? Don't we all? When we sit down, we've got a manga we like and we, we, we want to finish it. And he's trying to finish it, and Gloomy, the bear, wants his attention. And he's not getting it. So, you know, cute animals would do cute things. Gloomy goes, no, I'm going to beat the holy crap out of you. So he takes Pity and starts swinging around the room, gouging him, mauling him, and all this stuff. Meanwhile, Pity is just literally just going, no, I am going to finish this manga. I'm going. So as he's being slung around, smashed up against the wall, he's still feverishly holding that manga in his hand, and he finishes it. But um, but just that just kind of gives you an idea of, of what we're looking at here. Um, on a more kind of um, serious note... Um, an anime that I think is a good filler anime, um, you can take it or leave it kind of thing, and that is Cass Hearn Sins. Mm -hmm. um, this is a, um, unlike Gloomy Bear, which is which is supposed to be funny, Cass Hearn is uh, not, not so much. <laughs> um, it is, now there's two versions of this. There's the original version that came out in the 70s, and it was, and it was your prototypical, um, you know, um, boy android and his and his um pet robot dog thing you know are out to to save the world against the evil robots and save the human race so that that was the original version so in 2010 they rebooted it and they used basically the same story which is that um there's an evil robot um by the name of breaking boss and he, and instead of Cassern fighting against him, he's actually a flunky of the Breaking Boss. And the, and I'm not. This is not a spoiler, by the way. But but the the, the episode the series begins with instead of saving humanity, Cassern is the one who dooms it, or so we think, and he kills the one person Luna, who has the uh, ability to heal and give immortality to both robots and human beings breaking boss only wants it for the robots but not for the humans luna won't do that so he has Cassern go out and kill luna at which point he goes into a coma because that's what you do after you you know, doom humanity you just fall asleep for a few centuries and he wakes up and he has no knowledge of what's going on around him um this the, the entire anime as it's drawn is very bleak. Uh, so basically what it's called is the rust. And mankind is almost all but dead. Almost nobody can reproduce. All the human beings, very few human beings can reproduce so they can't bring the species back. And the robots are slowly decaying from the rust. And they're, they're you know, they're, they're starting to, to um, fall apart. And the myth is that if you can find Cassern and if you can destroy him, and you can cannibalize him, take him into you, then you can have immortal life. Mm -hmm. Think about that concept for a moment. 
Jesus, right? You know, if you take them into the body, body of the water and the blood and all that stuff. So that's what the robots believe. So they're all hunted down Cassern. Cassern is wandering this bleak, dead landscape because the world Earth has no vegetation. The seas are dead. There's no life. There's nothing going on. And he's just roaming the Earth trying to figure out exactly what happened. And all these people are out to get him and attacking him. And he literally has no idea why. Um, Fun. Yes, it's a, it's 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 an endearing anime that that a five year old should watch and and buy the plushies. Um, so, so that's that's kind of how this works. Um, and the the anime the, the reason why um, obviously for the, that it didn't really get into a franchise is because it it really does. And one of the reasons why it's kind of genius to me is that it brings across the concept that um, mankind is doomed. Like there, there, there is. You believe through the almost the entire series. There's a little bit of glimmer of hope at towards the end, where you're just like, okay, mankind is it, it. They're done. It's done. It's over. It's it's there. Everything's on its way out. Anything that had any life to it is on its way out. And it's this one robot that you don't want to feel good for because he's the cause of all of it. But then you're just also rooting for him. So it's it's just kind of a, an interesting bleak concept. He as he comes along, he comes along other types of robots that are more like him that look like androids and they make they have they have create relationships and things of that nature but they always disappear and they always they always die um so on that very uplifting that anime that i think you should watch and <laughs> and be uplifted by uh catch and sins um it came out in i believe 2010 japan I saw it at Otakon in, in 2012, and then it was on Toonami. Um, I think you can find it on... Let's see here. Um, yeah, you can find it now on Fun Animation or Crunchyroll. I, I, I don't know if, if they're... If they're well, now. well, now, yeah, I think they're all one yeah. in the same one big blob. Um, so there, so that is the 2010 series that you, that you want to look at, that you're, that you're aiming for. Um, Again, it's it's Caster and Sins, and uh, even though it is bleak, it's kind of like uh, Wolf's Rain, where you kind of have that bleakness of, of end, and um, it's it's something worth 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 watching. Um, another O N A that um, that I came across that I particularly liked, and it's kind of a throwback to. What I was talking about in the previous panel about music, you know, grabbing you and wanting, making you want to watch something, and it's called "That Is the Bottleneck," and "That Is the Bottleneck" is again, it's, they're, they're about uh, ten to fourteen minute episodes, and the music is this really good, nice um, punk music that that comes in, and uh, it's. It just grabs you, and then you realize that you're watching an anime about people working in a convenience store in Japan. <laughs> the, the the lives and tribulations of people working in a convenience store. Actually, it's a little bit more more to it than that. Um, the series basically starts with a character called Motu. Uh, you never see his um, you never see his face. His face is always obscured by a sign, a cat, a flock of ravens for some reason. <laughs> And whenever he is kind of just kind of like standing around doing his thing, you know, at the convenience store making the uh, the rice balls and the, and, the, and the the bread and stuff, the curry bread to to sell to people, someone from staff will walk in on him and go, "Oh, hey, Motu, how are you doing?" And then while you never see his face, you see that the character sees his face, and they run away screaming. So you you, you don't know what's going on, and. Each episode is called the bottleneck, and then a character of a person who's working in the store, in the convenience store. And what it is is that it's talking about the problems of each person that Motu is observing. Motu is kind of like the watcher, Yatu in the Marvel universe. He he kind of watches everything. He kind of observes everything. He he has a little bit of narration. He he kind of says. Oh, this is what I see of this person, and it isn't that you know too bad, or has some type of commentary. So each person has a a problem, a bottleneck, and they aren't um, you know mystical problems or anything like that. They're actual functional human being problems. So while this this anime, this O N or O N A, is quite humorous, 
at, at times there's an underlying sadness about all these people that are working at this convenience store, namely because they have nowhere else to go to because they don't know how to communicate. And that's actually the whole point of this anime. It's about the lack of communication, the inability, inability to communicate with other people due to um, internal feelings and technology, cell phones. Uh, the anime blames technology for people not actually talking to each other, but talking at each other. And it's a very interesting um, way of communicating, or no pun intended, communicating this point that the characters have their problems largely because of the way that they see themselves. For example, the manager of the store always wears a mask. And, and by the way, this was like right as COVID was hitting hard, so it's not wasn't intentional. But the, the manager of the store, older gentleman, wears a mask. And the reason why he wears a mask is because he doesn't want anybody to see his smile because he thinks his smile is stupid. So he's a really nice guy, and he walks around, but he, he never, you never see his face. And he doesn't want people to see and he's ashamed of it. And it's really sad because when he actually takes off his mask, as Motu has seen on occasion, he notices that the manager actually has a really nice, friendly smile, and that if people saw it more often, they would be more apt to... To, to want to talk to him, to be with him, and be his be his friend, and uh, and it's just it's it's those kind of sad things. And then there's another one where there's a girl who seems to be totally disinterested in what's going on around her. She's on a phone and she's just you know just kind of clicking away, clicking away, clicking away. And there's no she doesn't really interact with anybody, and she wonders why she's alone, why why she doesn't have a boyfriend, why people don't want to be her friend or anything and she's doing this as she's on her phone just da, 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 da. and you know the idea is like if you just put the phone down then you'll be okay but then we look at Motu himself and Motu of course we never see his face because odd things are going around and apparently his face is so horrific that um, people run away screaming like they have new hires that come into the store going oh hey isn't this a great first date oh my god what the hell are you and they run away so there's a customer that he has a crush on, and whenever she's in the store, there are no ravens that cover his face. There's no signs that cover his face. Even though we, as the audience, don't see his face, she sees his face. And he is thoroughly confused as to why she is talking to him. He doesn't understand why she's not running away. He's, he's got no clue. While he's observing everybody else's problems, he, he, can't, he can't understand his own problems. So this, even though it's a really short on a... Um, it's directed by, or it's done by Studio Aqua. Um, it's uh, directed by uh, Noboru Uguchi, who did uh, the 2014 uh, Japanese Ghostbusters. Um, it's a really nice story about communication. It seems funny, it's very fast paced, and it, you, you will laugh a lot at it about it, but it's just a sad story that's, that's kind of worth watching. All right, I'm going to go on to the next one here. Let's see if I can scroll down and... You can move that microphone. It doesn't have to okay. be that right. All right. Cool. All right. So that was that is the bottleneck. Mm. Oh, by the way, the, the, the song is called That Is The Bottleneck, and mm. it's... I'm going to try to say the bandit's name. It is... Uchi Kubi Goku Man Club. Cool. Have fun looking that up on YouTube. Um, actually, it's a, it's a really fun song. Um, so the next one that, that I kind of want to talk to a little bit um, is going to be a personal favorite of mine that I discovered in the past year that you will find on Manga TV, which is a free streaming uh, service on Roku, if you happen to have that. And it is Butt Attack Punisher Girl Gautaman R. I'll say that again. But Attack Punisher Girl Gautaman R. It is actually a sequel to the original. Mm -hmm. And it is from um, Studio Kikan, which does mostly kind of like in between animation and production. And they do things like with, with the, they do that kind of animation with things like The Blue Girl. So that kind of gives you, <laughs> gives you, <laughs> gives you a flavor of what they're about. Um, so originally this came out as a kind of like a 46 minute OVA uh, kind of thing and then it was re-edited into two 
uh, 23 minute um, episodes, uh, two episode OVA, OVA. And it is a silly OVA, and that's the whole point of it. It is a silly anime to watch. It is all about parody. Think of this as a very low budget ACO. Okay. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of stuff in there that is, and also it's actually Western parodies. That's the other part mm-hmm. of it. Um, so basically, our, our heroine, um, who is a very proper um, young lady at an all girls uh, Christian, uh, or not an all girls, but a, 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 a Christian private school, mm-hmm. and she is, you know, she wears the, the big dress from you know, neck to, to ankles. Mm-hmm. No, nothing sexual about her. She's just a pure, pure person, and 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 she has a wonderful best friend roommate, who is secretly in love with her. So you know you have that aspect of it, and she's in love with the you know the most handsome boy in the school, who happens to be a leader of uh, within the Black Buddha gang, who is out to rule the world by finding out who Gautaman is and destroying Gautaman so they can go forward on their conquest of the world using also the Catholic Church. So, yeah, there's that. Um, <laughs> so, as these two episodes, it, 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 it makes total fun of tropes. It makes total fun of, uh, you know, the idea of the, the tragedy, the romantic tragedy trope where, where the, the guy who's, who's the villain, the Black Buddha gang, and her are, are flirting with each other trying to figure out how they can be together not knowing that the other is actually their enemy and you know isn't this very very tragic but it's all actually all very very silly uh, as, as they try to figure each other out and the, the silliness of Gontaman is that when she fights crime she does of course the magical girl thing right so she transforms so you have that whole sequence and usually you get the you know the Sailor Moon outfit or something of that nature here you get this girl who looks like a 13 year old you know very young lady and she turns into like a someone who's in her 20s uh, bikini top a turban with a big feather um, go-go boots that go past the knees Mm -hmm. and a very tight fitting sumo you know belt and you know she's able to use her posterior for to you know defend herself from attacks and she's near invincible when she's in this costume when she changes into it so, oh, and it has these wonderful mirror shade, 1980s mirror shades glasses. Wow. So it's just really, it's just an awesome one for anyone. And uh, <laughs> so, it's, but, but again, that's the whole point is to make fun of what's going on around it. It's, it's making fun of the magicals. It's making fun of the, the romance. It's making fun of um, good guy versus bad guy, you know. Simplistic, yeah. Oh, are you looking at it? Sure. Yeah, I'm looking yeah. At it right do, now. do you see why I'm not putting it up? Yeah, okay. yeah. No, no kidding. Um, so you know, it makes fun of that. It makes fun, like for and the, the parodies that they make of, of the Western world is really quite hilarious. Um, so they make fun of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles by making them squids, octopus, but they they look really a lot like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and their job is that in the two. Uh, to depower Gautaman, mm-hmm. they have to take away her sumo belt because they figured out if you take away the, the belt, which means you kind of take off her clothes, then mm-hmm. she becomes powerless. Of course, they, they can't really do that. And the, the anime doesn't quite go there. Mm-hmm. But, and then, so as, as the series goes on, the two episode series goes on, you have the Catholic Church comes in after the, failure, after the principal, who is also another henchman of the Black Buddha gang. Right. Um, you know, forms a plan and gets a robot to come in to kill Gautaman. And keep in mind that the student body is totally unaware that she is Gautaman, right? <coughs> Nobody knows except for the Yuri um, roommate who's in love with her mm-hmm. eventually figures it out. And <laughs> so they send the robot. The robot is, of course, the Terminator. Okay, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's literally the anime version of Arnold Schwarzenegger as the Terminator, and he starts blowing up the school. Yeah, so low budget echo. There you go. And it's 
And the reason why this is genius is because it is so silly. And this and it and it somehow got a budget after the first. I, I never saw it, by the way, the, 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 the first season. There's an actual first season. This mm. is the sequel. I've never actually watched the first season, but the fact that there is an actual budget for this and that people want to see this is amazing in and of itself. And this is one of those again and again one of those things where, you know, if you're if you're looking for something to watch that's just meaningless and you just want to sit there and veg and laugh, here you go. So that is um nineteen ninety four. Yep. Nineteen eighty four. That was uh But Attack Punisher Girl Gautaman R. Again, you can find it if you have Roku. Um Manga TV, it's uh, free. It's free. It's a free streaming service off the Roku, and um, yeah, I enjoy. It, maybe, perhaps. All right. Now here's a one. Here's one, and we're going all back, all the way back to my childhood. This one is um, kind of actually important in anime history in terms of bringing anime to the United States. Uh, this one came out in the, the late 60s um, and it got, it got into syndication in the early 70s in, in America. And for those of us who are, who are old enough, you know, this is me on my walker, old enough to actually watch this show in the morning uh, after watching Romper Room and the mirrors, I see Susie, I see Steve, I see Brent, all that kind of stuff. Um, this is Marine Boy. Now, that's what we call it. There's several different names to this. There's Hang On Marine Kid, Marine Boy, there's you know, Undersea Marine Boy. It goes by many, many different names because there's been about three major iterations of this. Um, it was produced originally by uh, Terabi Doga. For those of you who like Doraman, that's the original production company of that. And the first, um, the first season was just three episodes, and they were in black and white, um, and they were a test. They were a test series to see how well this concept would work. And the concept was that here you have Marine Boy, a boy who can swim underwater. He has all these wonderful um, technological gadgets. He, he has a and a boomerang that he can throw in air and underwater that acts as a boomerang, but it's like indestructible, so it can blow things up. Uh, he has like kind of like uh, jetpack boots where he can go underwater, swim pretty quickly. Um, the suit itself is kind of armored, and you know he's like a 13, 14 year old boy, and he has this really special type of gun called oxy gun. So all he has to do is chew on this gun. As long as he has this gun, he's got about two hours worth of oxygen. So he, that's, that's how he can move around. The world at this point is concentrated on the ocean and undersea. So there's a lot of organizations. This is kind of like the, the evil organization of the week. So every week there's some organization that's throwing out subs and new um, you know, mecha or whatever monsters out there. And, and Marine Boy goes out there with his friends to fight the evil and, and the bad guys. Uh, he has a, a dolphin friend that he can apparently communicate with. And he has a little kind of sort of girlfriend named Neptuna, um, who is a mermaid. And the three of them are always going out on the adventure, saving, saving the world, saving the undersea world. And it, Neptuna is, is an interesting character because she's the one... Now, keep in mind, this came out in the 60s and 70s where women are just kind of like, okay, you can... You know, stay over there and, and not get in the way. Well, Neptuna actually saves Marine Boy a lot. Like he's he's pretty sure of himself, and then he gets you know caught up in the whatever it is that he gets caught up in. Neptuna is just like going, "Okay, I know you told me," and he literally tells her, "No, you go over there. You stay over there because you're a girl and you can't do anything." And of course, he's you know stuck in the cage or whatever. And Neptuna comes in, saves the day. And together they, they save the planet. And you would think that after 70, eventually 78 episodes, he would learn that you know maybe he should take some cues from Neptuna, Neptuna or whatever his name, or whatever the name is, and actually listen to her. But no, at the beginning of every episode, you, girl, go over there. So, but, you know, it makes for good watching. Um, so why is this important for... for um, anime history, bringing um, anime to 
America. Well, let's start with a little bit of the history, the actual production history of it. So like I said, there was originally three episodes, black and white, that came out. The test market was really good. It was on Nippon TV, um, and it did very, very well. So they said, okay, we're going to do another season of 13 episodes. And, um, no, I'm sorry, it was Fuji TV that did three episodes. Nippon TV took on the second season of 13 episodes. But here's where things got changed. They did it in color. So, yeah, so this is a big deal in the 60s. So, and, 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 because doing things, animation, first of all, just to animate in color at that time mm -hmm. is expensive. It's a lot of money. To broadcast and animate mm -hmm. that's in color is going to be difficult and expensive because you have to be able to broadcast that to television that can show color. And that is not to say that if you have a black and white TV, you can't see it. You can, but it kind of misses the point. Um, so a lot of broadcast stations in Japan said, we're going to take a pass on this because it's in color and nobody's really interested in color of a boy that swims around and you know makes a lot of mistakes and has to have a girl mermaid save his butt all the time. So we're going to take a pass on this. Finally, Nippon TV took it on, took it on, and they said, okay, great. Great, here we go. It's gonna be great. We did, you know, the first three three episodes were awesome. Everyone loved it, and it tanked. Nobody liked it. Um, you know, uh, hardly anybody had a color TV apparently, mm -hmm. and so they couldn't see the wonderful thing in color. And everyone just kind of said, "Well, this this story, okay, okay. Why am I? Oh, you know what? Forget this." Mm -hmm. So the contract was not picked up. Go about another year, and. In about that year, this guy, uh, Stanley R. Jaffe of Seven Arts, which is part of Warner Brothers, saw this, saw the 13 episodes, including the, the, the three original aired ones, and said, hey, this, this will sell in America. This, this will do it. This, we, mm -hmm. we can do this in America. We, we, we can, I, I want this. Yeah. I want to buy this. I want to bring it to America, and we're going to show it. And we're going to make money off of it. We're going to try to, you know, they, the idea was that they were going to go through the formula. You know, we're going to make have the animate or you know have the animation, build the toy, sell stuff. You know, that's that's what they wanted to do. So they they said so they they locked in the deal of getting the first three episodes, required it as part of the contract that they colorize those three episodes to match the other thirteen of, of the second season. Then he goes on to say, he goes. I want a total of 78 episodes. And of course, you know, uh, the, the makers of Doraemon said, uh, uh, excuse me, you want how many? Really? <laughs> Seriously? You want? And the idea is that what he discovered, what, what, what Jaffe understood was that if you're going to make a, a, a successful cartoon um, series, you want to be able to make it worth the money. So if you're going to spend the money to make a, a, a color animation with an interesting story that you think is going to sell, you don't want to just show for, you know, was it uh, 16 episodes and call it a day. You want it to go on for about three or four seasons mm -hmm. so you can sell it. So that people, remember this is the 70s, so it's broadcast. That means that people have to purchase the license to show the thing. So if he can get people interested in it, they're going to want to show more than 16 episodes. So he said, okay, we're going to do 78 we're going to do 78. Producer Doriamon said, heck yeah, we're doing it. Great. Oh, there's another part of this contract that we have to sign. Okay, what, what does that say? Oh, we can't air it in Japan until it airs in America first. What? So, mm -hmm. basically, what he said in the contract was, you Japanese are going to make me this anime. And once we show the anime in America, then you can show it in Japan and in the Asiatic markets. And you can sell it there. But we get first rights here in America. We show it first. That enables us to show it, get people interested. Then we can turn around and go to Europe, and sell the rights to Europe. Then you get the, the ability to, to show it in Japan, sell it to your broadcasting uh, uh, broadcasters in Japan. And then in South Korea, China, you get the idea. 
So that was a very big deal because that you know that's a, that's not something you would see today. Who today in Japan is going to go? Animators in Japan going, oh yeah, Americans get to see One Piece first before the rest of us. <laughs> that's not going to happen, right? Okay, so that that was kind of the deal for 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 this, and it's and it's very important to know that once that happened, it showed American viewers, particularly kid viewers. Hey, here's this new style of animation. Here's some interesting story. It's in color because most Americans have color TV sets, and they have first choice of rights, which is so so important in terms of broadcasting. In the age of streaming, licensing is different, is done differently, and it's about who gets to do it, not where necessarily where. Um, but it brought in, like for example, this helped to bring in Speed Racer. This helped to bring in Kimba the the White Lion. These, this is it, it shows like these that brought anime to America, and not only that is that why is this important like that, but the reason why you should watch it is actually it is a fun anime to watch. It's it's again it's just a bad guy of the week, you know. It's action packed, twenty minutes of action. It's fun. You get to laugh at it a little bit, and you yeah you get to enjoy it at the end of the day. So it's not anything. So it's something you can put down, walk away, and then come back after you have eaten your rotten food at the convention. Um, <laughs> so that's Marine Boy or Hang On Marine Boy or Undersea Marine Boy or Undersea Prince or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it has many, 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 many names. Um, and I am grabbing your your mouse as if oh, yeah, it is yeah. mine. <laughs> and I'm like, going, why is my cursor uh, not going uh, anywhere? <laughs> what is going on? I'm going insane. All right, another fun little O and A uh, that came out recently that I adore um, is Skullface bookseller, bookseller Honda San. Um, this is a originally, of course, a manga. Um, it was done. It was published by Media Factory. Uh, it's got about four volumes. It was published between uh, August 2015, uh, 2015 and March 2019. And the author simply really does go by the name of Honda. That's it. That's all she goes by. It's, again, it's a total of, of four four volumes and um, it is currently on Crunchyroll uh, episodes are you know kind of, kind of small you know less than 10 minutes um, but they are it's very simple anime it's one of those things where simple is good and this anime is about being a retailer being working in retail being a bookseller in a, in a retail joint in Japan and for those of us myself included who have had many jobs in retail, you know, being an associate, being on the floor, stocking and ringing up customers, dealing with customers and all that stuff, you will enjoy this anime. And it's not a bitter anime either. It's not just like, you know, oh my gosh, the customers are god awful and we hate them. It's more along the lines of, oh my gosh, this is what I have to do to get my paycheck, right? And they talk about real incidents, and, and they do it in a really fun way. So the author chose to make all of her characters, based all of her characters on real people that she works with. And, but what she does to hide their identities is actually draw them in certain ways. So they'll wear a mask, or they'll, they'll look like uh, an animal, or whatever. Or the, you know, her character looks like, a, looks, looks like a skeleton. And you just accept it. And the people who are the customers in the store are just regular people, but it's not mystical, it's just a way of hiding identity in a humorous way. And this, this anime is just, it's just so fun because it's just very, it's very highly relatable. You know, if you ever worked in retail and you know that you have like, there's one episode where Honda-san um, is at the, at the, at the, the counter ready to ring up and, and, and he goes, oh, it's the handsome American, and you know they have the drawing of the handsome American, and he's and, and Honda is just flustered to wanting to please the customer because have we all had that customer where you're just like very attracted to you? I want to do whatever I can for you because I find you very attractive. That's you know that kind of thing. And then there's they deal with people who are like crazy fan people, like so they deal with he deals with or the Honda deals with like um, customers who are maybe you know very intense on a specific type of, of genre and he has to navigate how to deal with that type of customer because not every customer is the same 
some are moody, some are nice, some are very intense in what they like and what they don't like. How do you please the customer? Very relatable, very funny, um, easy watch. This is actually a very easy one to, to binge watch on. And I, I just, if you work in retail, if you ever worked in retail long enough, and you want something relatable that you can laugh at and feel good about, that's the other part. Again, this is not a bitter anime. Watch this. It's a uh, bookseller on Honda Sun. Skeleton Books, Elder Hobbes. Um, so I'm going to take a quick drink here because I'm trying out. Got two more here. And <clears throat> I think the one we're going to, I think what we're going to do f instead of last, we're going to do next is something I just discovered two weeks ago. Prowling around on YouTube looking for stuff. You know, because you get sucked down that rabbit hole and you'd spend two hours on YouTube and you find all sorts of interesting things. And the thing I found was um, Twinkle Heart. So Twinkle Heart is a mysterious, mysterious o o OAB. OBA, sorry. And it is, a no, there's not a whole lot of information about the, this OBA. It's almost like it was made and then people said, I kind of don't want to remember this anymore. I don't want to be associated with it, which is kind of interesting because it's not bad. It's not good, but it's not bad. And it, um, it came out right before Christmas in 1986. Um, and the original creator and chief director is Seiji Okuda, and he's mostly known for story work and direction. Uh, but he has a huge, it turns out he has a huge list of work, a body of work, which includes um, episodes of Lupin the Third, Heidi the Swiss Alps, and Lost Universe. Um, now, the interesting thing about Twinkle Heart is that it is only one episode, and has never been made clear whether or not it is actually just a pilot, and nobody bought into it, or if it was just made, and there was no follow-up budget for it, or what. Nobody really knows what happened to this anime. Um, all we know is, is, is what we have in the one episode. One episode is, is about 45 minutes long, I believe. And <laughs> it starts with God being a very angry at something. He has lost one of his greatest treasures. And when I say God, I mean like as in the Christian God. And he is upset, and he's mad, and he's angry, and his mystical half horse snake dragon thing is looking at him and just like going okay what are you mad about and he goes I lost my treasure I lost love I'm going to have to send this is God the Christian God I'm going to have to send my daughters out to find love okay so a lot of things going on there so he as he's describing what he has lost and what he needs to have happen he's writing it in a book his bible and he's drawing, making really bad drawings of what's going on. And the idea is that is that he's going to send his two daughters off in a spaceship with a caretaker, um, a, an older, slightly older woman uh, than, than the two girls. One is probably 15, the other one's 16. The, the caretaker is probably about 18 years old. Um, it's, I believe they are called, respectively, um, the daughters are Lemon and Sherry. Lemon is the blonde one. Sherry is the firebrand leader of the group. Um, Lemon is the cute girl, um, you know, the cutesy girl, innocent girl. Um, and Barry is, of course, um, the you know the, the caretaker, who is just really kind of, for want of a better word, oversexed. I think. <laughs> I mean, he's just really kind of a weird character. So they go on to search for love, and they base their operations, of course, off of Earth. And at, on Earth, uh, they run a, a burger store, a, a burger joint. And they wear ridiculous little chef hats and you know kinds of things. And then the cute boy enters, and they all go, ooh, ah. And then they go off in the adventure, they go on a spaceship, and they go, I, we think we found, we found the lost treasure of love. And they go to this planet, and as they're flying around this planet looking for the lost treasure, apparently they've been going through combing the universe for all these different planets looking for it. 
they finally find a reading and they're like, oh, we, f- we think we found the planet, we found the treasure. And they land their little air bikes and what it is is it's three little snot-nosed brats beating up on plushies. Sentient plushies. So one is a very shy bear who's kind of doing this thing as it's getting beaten with a stick. Another one is a kind of uh, cute vampire rabbit plushie that keeps trying to fly away and they beat it down with a stick. And so the girls are just like, oh, it's plushies, why are you hurting them? And they go in and save the plushies by, you know, dropping firearms down on them, you know, just kind of going, leave, leave the plushies, one step away from the plushies. So <laughs> obviously we've gone into the absurd very quickly. They discover that these plushies have been imbued with the essence of life. And they think that if they find the essence of life, they'll be able to find the treasure of love. So that's the adventure. And they go on the adventure. I remember the cute guy from the burger store. Well, he shows up as a sort of bounty hunter kind of thing, doing the same thing. So they join forces and they try to find the lost treasure of love. And uh, they battle evil plushies that look like giant mecha teddy bears with guns and fangs. And imagine Gloomy Bear about you know 20 feet tall with, a, with an AK-47. That's that's kind of what you're looking at. And uh, so yeah, so it goes from the sublime to the ridiculous really, really quick. And so why should you watch it? Why should you watch this? You should watch it because it is very typical 80s animation. And it is very, very um, hallmarked in, in that fashion. And the weird thing is that it's not bad animation. It's actually quite good for the time. Also, it's just an interesting mystery. What happened? Nobody talks about this, this anime, by the way. Nobody really talks about it. People show it, will show it on YouTube, and they'll show a various version of bootleg or whatever, and say, okay, so here's the one episode. It's kind of interesting, kind of weird, that God has two daughters that he sends out on a spaceship to find love. And, you know, where do you go from there? Where, how, where, do we get any resolution for this? What is this? Was this a pilot? Was this a one-shot? Was this really it? Was this all there was going to be to it? Keeping in mind that the guy who wrote this, directed it, and made the storyboards, has a very storied career at this point. I mean, he's a veteran of the industry. He's, you know, he's a guy that you go to to do your anime. So what happened? So it's the mystery. It's it's it's, it's what happened. So for those of you in chat, and I offer you this this little challenge. It's on YouTube. You can find it. Twinkle Heart. Um, there's a sub and there's a dub, and just go ahead and watch it and see if you can figure out what this is supposed to be. Was it supposed to be a series? Was it supposed to be a miniseries? Was this supposed to be it? Was, is this all there is to it? Let me know what you find, because I am very curious, and I just honestly don't know. Okay. The last anime, I swear. Um, this one I saw at Otakon, and I thought it was very interesting, and I didn't really know much about it at the time. Um, for those of you who know me, I'm a huge Lupin the Third fan. I watch most of the stuff. It's 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 just a, it's just a fun thing for me. I just really enjoy it immensely. And on the, it was kind of weird because on the 40th anniversary of, of the anime series, and I think it was the the point of my notes, 45th anniversary. I'm oh, sorry, it's the 45th anniversary of the manga and the 40th anniversary of the series. They're celebrating it at the same time. They were going to bring out a new Lupin anime. This is in. 2012, yes, 2012. And it's a 13 episode series and it's called Lupin the Third, The Woman Called Fujiko Mai. We're talking, this is all about Fujiko. It's not really about Lupin. Lupin's in it. So it's the rest of the gang in various places in, in the anime. But this is about her and it's about who she is and, that, and why she is. So, you know, and for the rest of the Lupin series, you get Fujiko who comes in, who's a very endowed figure. And she's, yeah, yeah, that's the best way I can put it. Uh, a dad figure who is smart but is always captivated by the rich, by the, the very shiny diamonds and metals and jewelry and all that kind of stuff. And is, is very flirtatious with, with Lupin and is, enjoys leading him on. And you know, it's very quite silly, right? And she's, she's capable. She's a cat burglar and she's capable. But, you know, that's, that's what you get from, from the series. Well, this, the woman called Fujiko Mine, is much darker, 
it is much more involved and you get a lot more detail about Fujiko herself and you learn a lot a lot more about her you come to appreciate her a lot more and the interesting thing about this series is that it does a couple things well it shows how Fujiko comes into contact with Goyamon, Jigen, Jigen, and Lupin independently. So she has relationships with these guys before they all became a little group. And not in a best of ways. Actually, quite adversarial ways. Um, they're actually up against each other quite often. I think Jigen, I believe, in one of the episodes is actually tasked to kill her at one um, and Lupin is not as funny in this one as he is in the regular series. And the reason for that is that when they decided to do the celebration of the anime and the manga at the same time, they decided to go with Monkey Punch's Lupin the Third, not the anime Lupin the Third. If you know your manga, Lupin the Third is not a nice guy. And that manga series by Monkey Punch is very adult. Um, there's a lot of death, there's a lot of betrayal, there's a lot of sex, there's a lot of misogyny. It's, it's not something for kids. And this, this anime, this particular anime series is definitely not for kids, by the way. Um, so it brings the, that darkness into play. So the, the, it's not a casual, oh, Lupin, come get me, yeah, ha, ha, I'm going to run away from you. It's literally, no, you stay away from me. Seriously, stay away. I, I don't want you near me. And you learn through the series as she's meeting up with Lupin, Goyamon, and, and Jigen, and she's going on her own individual adventures, you come to realize that her desire for the bright, shiny things is not really her desire, but that's what she's programmed to do. She's not, you know, a very carefree, flirtatious woman. That is a skill set that she has, that she uses to get what she needs. It's a very different Fujiko than what you get from, from the, the regular anime. It's a deeper story. And it goes to a point where it, she sees a young lady being treated the way that she was treated as a girl. And her solution to this problem, because she doesn't want the little girl to be like her, because she's doing things kind of against her will, is to actually kill the girl. She'd rather the girl die than be like her. Pretty dark. Interesting, but pretty dark. Um, so that kind of gives you a flavor of how, of kind of just how the how the anime goes, and it's very good. It's there's a lot of action to it. There is a lot of I mean, like I said, it's adult, but you know, tasteful. Well, as much <laughs> as anime can be tasteful, it's it's tasteful, um, and it's it's uh, it's just very interesting. You you learn about Fuji, and that's that's the whole point of this, and. It is the animation is incredibly incredibly well done. It's very superior. When I saw it at Otakon, I was like, as soon I watched, you know how they show four episodes at a time. I immediately ran down to the dealer's room to try and find a copy. And just as I feared, pretty much all the guys were yeah, just, just for some reason, you know, people, a whole bunch of people came down here and and, and sold and I sold out of it. So it took me a while to get to find the series and actually watch it. Um, again, this is not for kids. It's not something that you get. Uh, you, you sit down with Junior and go, oh, hey, look, Lupin the Third. This is going to be funny. This is not that Lupin. This is the Monkey Punch Lupin. Um, the, and the other thing, just, just to be clear about this series, is that it is also about abuse of various, various kinds, and that's kind of how Fujiko gets created. But this is definitely one of those ones where when I was at Otakon and I saw this, there was like maybe a few other people there, and they, you know, like I said, they bought they bought it out. People were kind of surprised that this thing got was that all these people just ran down to the deals room and, and bought it out, and then they put it on a moratorium. It's been released since then, actually, as of this month. I think it's on Blu-ray. Um, you can't really find it anywhere. They were going to put it on Toonami. They were, yeah, because Tudami said, okay, yeah, we like it. They got as far as getting the licensing, and then they said, okay, well, we might have to edit this a little bit to, to put on Tudami, and they realized, oh, well, if we edit this, basically, it's, it'll be five minutes per episode. That's about all we can show. Um, so, okay, so that's, you know, that's Fujiko Mine, um, and that is anime 
that um, not quite franchise material, but it's really good filler anime that maybe you have missed because you had to go to the bathroom and maybe you needed something to eat. Um, so that's that's it for the panel. Uh, I await your questions. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Always fun. Um, yeah, so always cool to, to, to go on. Um, have you seen the original picture? Yes. Okay. Which do you prefer? I prefer the I prefer the uh, the twenty ten. Okay. I, 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 right. I well, you know, in case you couldn't tell by my descriptions of Sunday and I, 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 I kind of like the dark stuff a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yeah. Um, that's cool. By the way, if you go on Netflix um, and search for Lupin, you will find a modern live action Lupin yep. um, with a uh, a black man. Um, it is French, because Lupin is a French character. It is an adaptation of the French Lupin character. Um, you might not see it for a little while, because uh, there was a robbery on the set of Lupin. Really? I didn't know this. Yes, this just happened this last, last week. Oh, really? Um, and apparently they made, made off with, with some you know, stuff on, on set. That's hilarious. And here, here's my question. See... If it were me, the actor who plays Lupin would actually be a master thief who gets the role as Lupin. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> that would be awesome. That would be really great. But uh, I, I'd like to see that news report. <laughs> that, would, that would be funny. Major heist. Of a, uh, <laughs> a thing. Um, and apparently, like he was, he was there. Like, like this wasn't like dead of night. Like they, oh. they, they, they took stuff while like. While he was in another room, you know, doing things. So wow. it was pretty scary. Wow. Um, but yeah, doing the uh, doing the, the those one offs are always fun to see the stuff. It's just like you know, this is never gonna be a franchise. It's just yeah. oddball little shows. Um, you know, because there's so much out there. God, there is. I, when I was trying to come up with this list, by the way, by the way, this list is actually much much longer. <laughs> and and I could have gone on like you know I could just say you know what Hong Kong's gonna be about me and I'm just gonna <laughs> talk about it these anime. Um, like like one of the ones I did want to talk about but I opted to to go with, with mm. Fujiko was uh, Way of the House Husband, mm. you know, one which is on Netflix. I encourage you to, to watch that. It's a good another good little one. Um, but yeah, they these the the idea I got for this for this panel was simply because. Um, there really are a lot there, there's so much anime out there right yeah. there's so much to watch and you know like and I was thinking about it at the convention like whenever I had to go to the bathroom and I was like you know you know, here's video room A mm. and the bathroom is like over there like you know on the other side of the center and you have to run so you're going to miss stuff and when you're like planning at a convention or you know you, know, you need to eat, you need that weird sloppy joe feed <laughs> kind of thing and you, you, beat product. Yeah, beat product. Uh, <laughs> animal or people, you decide. <laughs> and you know, you you plan. You know, like you get your phone. You get, you plan your you know, how you're gonna look at it. And you look at and you look at the video. What's 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 playing in the video mm -hmm. rooms? And you go, oh, I'm not interested. Ah, that doesn't sound like anything. I'll I'll skip that. And it's amazing what you miss. But you know, yeah. you can't you can't help it sometimes. Sure, but, yeah, yeah. But you know, some of the stuff you miss. Like if I hadn't, like the Fujiko thing. Um, was so amazing. I'm glad that I stuck around. I was actually about to get dinner, and then I realized that it was a Lupin thing coming up next. I was like, "Oh, it's Lupin! I gotta see this!" And it was something totally different. I'm glad I stuck around for it. Yeah. Um, uh, what was the question? Uh, why is Lupin season three considered not well received as the other seasons? I don't know. Um, my guess is, and I've only started watching it, is my guess is that uh, people are probably turned off by the animation. Um, I like it, personally. Um, I, you know, it's, it's Lupin, so it's not going to be a hard thing to watch. But I think it's part of it is that, and part of it is also, I think it's more along the lines of, um, it's not Monkey Punch, but it's in that direction, I think, um, a little yep. bit. So. Yep. Hey, JJ. Hey, JJ. Um, well, if, if you're talking about original Lupin, um, I know season one was Miyazaki. Right. I think he left for season two. Mm -hmm. um, and so I don't know where it had gone by season three, but maybe by yeah. that point it was like, well, this is going, you know, this is one or two far off the, the, the plan. Yeah. Who knows? Um, good question.
But Lupin, I mean, boy, there's a there's a franchise. <laughs> you want to get into that? Yeah, I mean that's its own five panels right there. Yeah, exactly. You know, you know um, talk about why why Evangelion? Why yeah, 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 exactly. Well, the is also so weird because it is it's an institution now in Japan mm-hmm. where there's just you know the, the yearly TV movie and all that oh, kind of right, stuff. Right. Yeah. You know? And so it's just kind of part of the culture as opposed to an, an anime franchise like Attack on Titan or something. Right. Yeah. Um, so it's very, very different. Um, but speaking of that, I remember um, one of my early, uh, early Otakon early memories was wandering into a, a video room and watching um, Popola Kwa Monogatari, <laughs> which is a, um, an adaptation of a video game. Always a good start. Um, <laughs> which is basically these little chibi characters all running around in a fantasy world. And I think I've shown you guys screenshots where it's, their eyes are basically an oval with a like a um, a clock at nine o'clock, just like you know right. wedge in it. That's the, that's the entire eye for all <laughs> the characters, and it's just like wait, that's the one that has really good Celtic music. Right? Yes, yes, yeah, that's yeah, the one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gorgeous music. Yeah. Oh yeah, um, the music really is. And, and just just you know sitting down and watching you know twenty minutes of that and all these random silly characters running around and then and then you know there's a quiet woman while the, the fairy girl mourns the death of her people on a rock looking over everything You're like what is this what are you doing what is this show <laughs> why and it's some you know three episode OVA and, and you know where this is never going to be co- I think there was a TV series but it was like video game popular we can we'll make, we'll make one OVA you know right. kind of for the fans you know and, uh, and and get some merch going out of it but just that was the thing very yeah, good thing Uwe Bold didn't get a hold of it <laughs> I don't know do you like Do you like Detective Conan? Ooh. I do, actually. I do. I, um, I, you know, again, that's that's one of those you know wonderful tsunami things that you that you just happen to come across, and I, I, I do. Uh, I haven't watched the whole thing. I know there's a lot of a lot to it. I, I watched maybe the first season. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed the premise of it, except for the fact that the father is not that concerned that his son has disappeared. <laughs> but you know, it's anime, so yeah. you know, you know, it's kind of like suspension of disbelief. It, it's like Pokemon. Right, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Sure, kid, go off I'm and go under the world. world. Yeah. Or was it Hunter Hunter? Yeah. yeah, yeah, Hunter. yeah, yeah, yeah. Do the dangerous, oh, you're 11, you're, oh, you can handle the dangerous yeah, thing that will eat you alive. <laughs> yeah, sure, that's that's fine. It's okay. It's all good. No, I, I do like, I do like uh, Detective Conan. I think one of the reasons why I like that show, as opposed to, you know, even though it has the fantastical element of him being regressed as, uh, into a boy, um, little boy, is that it is actually a detective show, so that's kind yeah. of fun, which which you don't often get anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Hi, Ginger. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel bad because I think Detective Conan initially came out over here in America at a point mm-hmm. where there wasn't a lot of like differentiation between um, audiences. Yeah. So yeah. it came out like, oh, you know, show for kids, kind of, yeah, but there's a lot of murder. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Dead people. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Why didn't we get Doraemon? That's a really good question. Um, here in the West, one of the longest running shows. Yeah. Um, I think the reason is it's, it's the, you know, the, the sheer volume of it. Yeah. Yeah. Sheer volume of it. Keep in mind that when uh, in the seventies, when when these scenes were coming over, mm-hmm. the the scripts part of it was is being able to find somebody at that moment to be able to do the voice acting like dubs like you know a lot of people make fun of of speed Mm, racer but there's a reason for that Mm -hmm. and the reason is is okay well first we have to translate real quick Mm -hmm. then we have to get somebody to do it real quick and then we have to put it to the to the show real quick and then we have to get it to broadcast real quick Mm -hmm. and if you have a if you have an already established show of that nature which i think probably was like what into it already into its Mm -hmm. Like however many seasons and it already, I don't think that anybody wanted to touch it because of, of contractually having to figure out how you're going to, quite frankly, sub it or no, I'm sorry, dub it. Yeah. So I th- I think that's the only reason why we didn't get it. I also suspect there was a lot of prejudice against, and I, I use prejudice in a broad sense, against bringing over shows that were obviously set in like modern Japan. Right. They're trying mm-hmm. to explain all yeah. the references. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You do Astro Boy Speed Racer, all that kind of stuff, because it's more generic. Marine Boy, all Murder, that kind of stuff. Right, yeah. So that might have been one of those things where it's like, eh, that's going to be hard. Eh, yeah, you know. we're, we're not going to spend the time on that. Yeah, you know. who knows. And considering all the things they had to, they, they felt they had to change for Robotech, 
you know, of just like the little yeah. things like this, ha 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 ha, like that right. makes sense. It's like, wow, you know, yeah. <laughs> a sci-fi space opera where that one little gesture is, is not is uh, unacceptable. <laughs> well, I think you were you were telling me um, about how you realize that oh, they're not actually being hit in the head with a hammer, or, uh, or, or like the, watching Ranma. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah they're yeah, realizing, uh, oh yeah, he's not actually being hit in the head yeah. with a hammer. <laughs> There's things that are lost in translation yeah. that come over here that, that people just feel like, oh my god, that's really valuable. He's being hit in the hammer. No, no, not really. It's mm -hmm. it's, it's a metaphor. If they yeah. do a metaphor. <laughs> if, yeah, anime can be really violent. Um, <laughs> you realize, oh, it's just it's a it's a joke, basically. Um, it's it's um uh, like Love Hina. Yeah. Uh, Going off in the air and all that kind of stuff. Oh, okay, that's clearly not actually. You know, that's not actually <laughs> happening. He's just getting mm, knocked around some. A little bit, a little bit. Your favorite anime, I said it all. Lavina? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I live for Lavina pretty much. <laughs> I know all the characters' names, uh, all the stories, all that. All the merch. All the merch, definitely. Yeah, Lavina is just. As a matter of fact, he has the... No yeah. way. <laughs> <laughs> Hidden behind. <laughs> yeah. Um, pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. There's, a, there's a lot of anime out there. Yeah. Oh, uh, before I go, yeah. before you put on another wonderful... Because I believe Ginger's up next. Um, yes. Wonderful, wonderful video coming up. Mm -hmm. um, before I go, uh, from the previous panel, from the music panel... Mm. Um, I put on Discord a couple of days ago in the music section oh, yeah. uh, links to a uh, link to my to the side tube that I have, cool. and I'll have all the music on there. So if you want to listen to the music that I was talking about earlier in the day, you can go there and, and awesome. enjoy that. So. Cool, cool. All right, sweet. Yeah. Well, then um, we're gonna switch to some uh, interstitials, so we'll see a little bit more of some of. Um, uh, of Kira's travels around Japan, and we'll get her panel at uh, 5 p.m. Eastern. Yes. So uh, we will see you all back in a little bit. Thank you. See you guys later. Absolutely.